Today, we're at Wimbledon School of English talking to teachers about how they use technology. We, nearly every classroom here, we're lucky, has an interactive whiteboard, so we can use that, the software there. Obviously, that means we can use YouTube, etc., etc. The many websites that we might use, um, like One Top English. We're also big on um, bring your own device. So, for example, if you're teaching an exam class, you might get them to go around the class or go around the school taking photographs. They come back and they compare their photographs on their phone because it's personalised rather than a couple of photographs in, say, an FCE or CAE speaking book. I would divide that into three sections, and the, the first being the hardware, the devices they bring into class, so iPads or smartphones, or even if they bring their MacBooks or something like that. Uh, then I would then say um, apps, and then after that I would also say uh, any websites, uh, databases and things like that. So you've got three sections of technology, and I, I, I will use whatever comes uh, on, on a device without them having to download it. Uh, video recorders, um, you know, photographs, etc., any type of messenger um, apps, like we said before, talking about a way to connect students together as well as access information. And then usually your websites is where they can get a lot, a lot more of that information spectrum. Well, in most classes, I generally get them to do two presentations at the beginning and near the end. The first presentation, I ask them to go away and do a PowerPoint in their own time about themselves, about their own culture, so we can get to know them a bit better. Then later on in the class, I ask them to do the same thing, but this time I get the contents from taboos and issues. They've got to select one subject, and they've got to do the same thing, and then present a 10-minute presentation with a PowerPoint the week later. Outside the classroom, I tend to... Uh... I use my own websites or my own videos to set repeated tasks. For example, uh, what I call listening to speaking uh, exercises. So I'll have a video which I actually explain the exercise and then I'll set the task by giving them YouTube videos. So I tend to use websites as uh, tech outside classrooms as well as just setting tasks where they utilize all of it. Um, I think we use it because it's visual, um, it's immediate, it makes things more personal and I think the, one of the big things as well is that the picture can convey a thousand words so there might be something that's a tangible thing they can see. I might be trying to explain and they don't get it, I can just go onto Google Images, find an image and the whole class know what I'm talking about. Um, no, it's, it's a very interesting question because a lot of teachers will say, well, you're not really adding anything to the classroom that's, uh, that we've got already. But I would argue that um, to have a, someone who's truly a global citizen and participating in the world as we know it, and that's really why we're in this. You know, we want people to be able to communicate globally and, and create a globalized culture. And technology is definitely a part of that. And having language learning and language education hand in hand with becoming a global citizen is a very important thing. And establishing those connections means that when they leave the classroom, they still keep going um, in, that, in that manner and develop that.